distractions and about technology and how it really is inhibiting our brains from being able to focus. Alrighty, welcome back. So excited to dive into this episode all about increasing your focus because there is one thing I have learned in the last like six months or so is that there are a lot of women who have a million different things on their plate and they're trying to move forward their goals, trying to get stuff done, trying to be productive and focused and coming to me and hearing like how we live into our cycle makes a huge difference from for that. And so I want to create this episode geared strictly towards increasing your focus and increasing your productivity strategies that you can actually implement no matter what phase of the cycle you're in, but also kind of going a little bit deeper in some of these strategies that you may have heard about and actually why we need to look at them a little bit differently and how you can actually really use them. So I have noticed over the last couple of months that there's been a lot of women coming to me who have ADHD or think they may have ADHD or some sort of feeling like that, right? They're feeling like I can't focus and get stuff done. And I don't want to negate that for anybody, right? So if you are feeling that way right now, however, I will say that as a therapist who has worked with kids with ADHD and just seeing the way the world has worked, I think a lot of us are feeling a lot of those same symptoms because of how much overstimulation we're getting. We are feeling like when you just look at technology and you look at the amount of technology we have, I I literally, as I recorded, I started recording this episode and then got distracted because somebody sent me a text message and it buzzed on my watch and then it buzzed on my phone on the desk. And I was like, I like, I totally lost it. I totally lost my train of thought. I can't even do this. And so I restarted the podcast, took off my watch, took off my phone, like set them aside, set them in the other space so that I could fully be present here with you right now. And I think a lot of women are functioning in that way, right? There's so many distractions, not just technology. We have mom life and work life and business and soccer games. And we have all of the things that we're trying to juggle all of the time that it can get really easy to feel like we're forgetting things. We can't focus on things. We, we aren't seeing things through to execution. We aren't able to actually like sit down and actually get something done because your mind is running a million miles an hour with all of the things that you have to do. And so I want to bring into this episode one, like I'm not going to negate if you have been diagnosed with ADHD or not. I like that's between you and your doctor, but I will say that I feel like a majority of women and probably even men are experiencing a lot of overstimulation. We have so much going on. It's so hard to pay attention and be productive and focus when we're wearing a million different hats, juggling a million different things. And so one, just take a breath and recognize that and say, you're working really hard. You're doing a lot, okay? And this episode, I hope to be able to show you some ways that you can offload some of that so that you can actually start to feel like you're focusing better. You're actually getting things done, not feeling like you're juggling a million different things all at one time, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you a couple. I had like five, but now as I'm like talking, I my brain, my brain is going in a whole different direction and telling me like, hey, don't forget, we wanna talk about this and we wanna add this in there. So we'll see where this episode goes. But number one, I want you to do a brain dump, right? Because what happens for a lot of us is that we're carrying a million different things in our head, right? We've got, oh, that permission slip we have to sign, the soccer game that we have to do, the the snacks that we're getting, like we need to get that to our team member. We need to get that podcast recorded. Like there's so many different things that are coming at you. And one of the practices that I've gotten really good at and, and I try to be up on all the time is brain dumping those things out. Because if your brain is trying to hold on to something, right? So if it's like you have a mental to do that you need to get done and it's trying to hold on to that information, it's it's multitasking. Your brain is halfway over here 
And then it's never fully present in what you're actually focusing on. So for example, if you like, if you know you have to make a dentist appointment, which I do, I actually was sick when the kids had dentist appointments and I canceled their dentist appointments and I have not called back. So I know I need to make dentist appointments. And I also know that like, I need to get this stuff done today for this podcast. I need to get it out. And so if I keep that to do up in my head, the dentist appointments up in my head, right? I don't write it down. My brain is trying not to forget that. Like it's trying to remember like, Hey, don't forget, we got to do that. And so it's juggling it up here. Like part of my brain is thinking about that and keeping it there. Even if you're not cognitively consciously thinking about it, right? Like you might not be sitting there thinking like dentist appointment, dentist appointment, dentist appointment, but it is, it's like sitting there trying to remember it. And then now you're in this podcast and you're recording and you're engaged and all of a sudden it goes dentist appointment and your brain goes, Oh crap, I got to go over there. I got to do that. I got to do the dentist appointment or I'll forget it again. Right. And so even just brain dumping and putting everything out or getting really good about doing things in the moment instead of like waiting for it to be later. So for me, one of the things like especially appointments and uh, things like the kids have so many different games and soccer games and stuff like that. One of the things I've gotten really good about is as soon as I hear about something, I put it in my calendar almost immediately. Because if I wait to put it in my calendar later, I know it's I'm going to forget and it's not going to make it. So the things that you can do in that current moment, like, right, like immediate things that are like quick to do's, they're quick tasks that are done. Just do them in that current moment and have it be done with. Like, don't have it in that running to do list for you to do later. Just get it done. And then any of those running to do's, put them on paper. Because one of one of the things I see a lot of women really struggling with is decision fatigue, right? There's so many decisions, so many different things, and then they burn out. You get overwhelmed with just all the different things that you have juggling and all the different things. And it just be like, whatever, take care of it. I can't even do it. And then maybe you actually have a block of time to sit down and get work done. But, and maybe it's actually you've aligned it with your cycle. So you're like in the right phase, you're in the right zone. Your brain should be pumped and ready and primed and ready to go, but it's just not there. Like your, your, your brain is scattered in a million different ways. And so doing, and that's part of that decision fatigue, right? Like there's just too many things. And so putting it down on paper, one gets it out of your head. Your head does not longer have to hold on to that information. But now what you can do is actually evaluate which one of those things is most important that you need to get done first. Because I think that's a big mistake that a lot of women are making is they don't even know what to focus on. So if you sit down to the computer and you're like, I got this work block time and you know that you have a million things to do, but you don't even know where to start right? There's a lot of women that want to even just get started in a business. Maybe that's where you're at right now is you haven't even started a business and you know you want to, but the idea of all of the things that come in a business feels overwhelming and you're not even sure where to start. And so that decision fatigue of like, where do I even get started limits you from actually even taking action just because you don't even know where to start. So that brain dump and putting everything out on paper can be really powerful for you to get the clarity, get the vision, and actually create the tasks that are going to align with the goal of where you want to head. Okay? So brain dump is number one. Number two is to pay attention to your body. So I already elicited or like highlighted a little bit earlier about you're in your phase of your cycle. So making sure one, that you're in the right phase of your cycle. And then two, making sure that you're paying attention to your body throughout the day and those 90 minute cycles that you have throughout the day and where your energy levels are in that. Oftentimes, one of the big mistakes that I see women making is just working really hard and pushing really hard and pushing past that point of exhaustion, staying up late, getting up early, just pushing and pushing and pushing on these tasks. And the more that you push and the more you like eliminate your body and stop listening to your body and that, the less your body is going to show up for you. Really, truly, your body is the vehicle for actually producing all the work in your business. It's the vehicle for showing up for your family. It's the vehicle for being able to increase and expand your revenue and engage with your clients. Like your body is the vehicle. It's the vehicle for growth in your business. And so if you're neglecting it and not paying attention to it, 
there's a couple of options. At one point, you're going to eventually burn out. Or two, you're cutting your productivity. You're limiting your success. You're limiting what's possible and capable for you because you're not paying attention to your body. Now, with that, there's a couple things like when we look at your body, making sure you're creating movement, right? Movement in, in, or like stagnicity is one of the fastest ways to cut your productivity in half. In fact, movement can be so powerful in so many ways. And it's actually one of the core pieces of like inside your cycle advantage. I teach the daily five, like my five things that I think are the most powerful for actually keeping yourself moving forward and showing up for your body and your mind every single day. And movement is one of them because it keeps your body in this different level of energy and it keeps your ability to focus. And even going back to thinking about like ADHD, there's a lot of research in terms of kids with ADHD that when they're in the classroom, their brain, if they're like their bodies are primed for more movement, right? Their their bodies need more movement. They need that more stimulation than maybe somebody who is a little bit less neurodivergent or however you want to put that. But Kids with ADHD need more movement. And so what happens is that if a teacher, parent, or whoever is like trying to force that child to sit still in class, they their brain now switches gears to stop moving, stop moving, stop moving, stay still, stay still, stay still. And so whatever the teacher is teaching, they're not paying attention to because they're focused on keep my body still, keep my body from moving. Whereas if we introduce things like a therapy ball or a movement seat or allow them to have some sort of a fidget, their brains get that stimulation that it's looking for, that movement that it needs. And then because it's getting that movement that it needs, it actually has the cognitive capability to actually hear what the teacher's talking about. And regardless if you have ADHD or not, movement for adults can also do the same thing, right? Making sure that you're exercising. Even for me, if I'm sitting down here working and recording this podcast, as soon as I'm done with this podcast, I have to get up. I'll either just go to the bathroom. I'll go get a drink of water. I'll get some coffee. I will do something, but I cannot stay sitting stagnant in this all day long. And if I'm having a really low day, like if my energy is feeling really low, I integrate one of those mind body activators to really increase that energy and increase that focus. And nine out of 10 times, it's going to be either a workout session, a yoga session, a walk around the block, going outside, getting in nature, something that's requiring my body to move. And I think a majority of women are underestimating that. A majority of women are not valuing like the movement component. So if you have a project you really need to get done and you really want to focus on it, maybe it's actually getting on a treadmill. I know a lot of women who actually work on a treadmill and the standing desk because that constant movement keeps your brain moving. It keeps you stimulated. It actually allows more ideas and more creativity to come, more focus to come. Now, the other thing with your brain and looking at like your body and evaluating where your body's at is looking at those phases of your cycle. So you are not intended to work the same every single day all throughout the month, nor hour to hour throughout the day. Are you the same? You fluctuate. And so oftentimes, if you're sitting down to focus and get something done and you're feeling distracted and you're feeling like you can't focus... My first question is to be like, where is your body at right now? What does your body actually need? Does your body, is it in that place of ready to focus and ready to get work done? Or does it need something else, right? Maybe it is movement. Maybe movement will help rein it in and and like help it focus. Maybe what you're working on and the task you're working on doesn't align with where your brain and your body are primed at. So really making sure that you're looking at your body where your body's at and how you can support your body to show up is going to be key and foundation number one. Now, number three is to take a look at your environment. Okay. So looking at your body and your environment and how they kind of tie together is that, like I said about visual or like stimulation and overstimulation, a lot of us have environments that are very visually overstimulating. They're overwhelming. And so your brain is trying to process all of this visual stimuli at the same time as trying to focus on something that you're working on. And so it can't like it's like it's your brain is multitasking, even if cognitively you're not feeling it and you're not seeing it. So having all of the clutter around your house, having all of the space clutter around your workspace, all of those types of things are going to distract you from actually working. In a former 
time and space in my business, that's what I really helped women do was help them declutter their spaces because it lowers the stress load on your brain significantly. And so for moms who are feeling really triggered and feeling really overwhelmed in their house with their kids and things like that, reducing the amount of clutter can really help them show up in a much more aligned and peaceful and calm way because their brains can like actually breathe and take a sigh of relief. Same thing for you in terms of business. Now, I will say like my brain sometimes doesn't focus really well. Like I was trying to work on a project and I was trying to do it in a Word doc and it just did not flow. Like my brain was not flowing there. So I grabbed my good old handy like sticky notes here and was writing out all of my different ideas and all my thoughts and all my sentences, like the words that I was trying to put into the Google doc, it was just not working. So I had sticky notes all over my desk before I started this podcast. For me to be able to show up and focus on this podcast, I cannot have sticky notes all over my desk. Like just, I can't, you can't, like you can't focus a hundred percent being here, being present in the moment with those visual reminders that you have something else you're working on. There's another project. There's something else that I was doing. I can't fully be in this moment. And so really paying attention to that environment and that space that you're creating for your business could be as simple as looking at, do you have a designated workspace, right? Your brain gets these like little triggers So if we can help support those triggers, it actually helps you transition into more of a workflow state easier. So for instance, if I come sit at my desk, I know my desk space is work time. If my desk, like my computer, if your computer is like sitting at your kitchen table or you're doing it in like on the couch or you're doing it in bed or any of those other places, you're crossing and blending those kinds of activities into different spaces. So even to the point, like this is a little side tangent, but they say that you're not supposed to have a TV in your bedroom for that same reason. When you have a TV in your bedroom, your brain automatically goes to this place of trying to focus on like bedtime. You're like, you're in bed, you're supposed to go to bed, right? And if you have a TV in there, it's like stimulating your brain at the same time as being in bed, your brain has a harder time falling asleep. So really making sure that like what happens in certain areas like is a trigger for that. So for me, sometimes I'll use like a essential oil, right? So I know like when I put on this essential oil and put it on my wrist, I smell it. It's like, okay, here's work zone. So can you create a trigger in your environment, in your workspace that's going to help you automatically transition into like, hey, this is focus time. The next one that I want to talk about is eliminating distractions. Okay. So there's distractions all the time. And I was listening to that TEDx talk about distractions and about technology and how it really is inhibiting our brains from being able to focus. And so what I teach my clients is during that phase of your menstrual phase to get off of social media, really, truly, like if you could eliminate technology during that phase and allow yourself to get into this place of being bored, what it does is it helps reduce the stimulation on your brain and your brain can then focus so much better. I'll tell you, like, this has been something that's really been a struggle for me over the years because I am a productive person that likes to be busy, right? I told you I was a I like always multitasking, In college, I had multiple things always on my plate. Even today, I would say I probably have a ton of things on my plate, but I've gotten much better about eliminating things and making sure that I have the space to just be still and be quiet. So making sure that you have distraction-free zones, both like physically when you're in that space of working, closing out tabs, closing out like noises, turning off your phone, those types of things. But the other big piece of this is actually putting yourself in a place that allows your brain to practice this, allows your brain to get in this place of slowing down instead of being in a hyper alert, like the hyper overstimulated state all the time. So things like being out in nature, letting yourself just rest letting yourself like this last weekend, I was out by the pool and I was going to read and I was going to lay there. And I just felt kind of groggy a little bit, not in the bad way, but like just kind of tired. And I was like, I'm just going to lay here in the sun and how that has taken me a lot of time to practice, to be comfortable and be willing to just lay there and not do anything and not be quote unquote productive, but it is right. 
laying there and resting and allowing my mind to take some space and to not think about anything and do anything helps me actually show up better. And that's where the last one, the fifth one that I want to talk about is like redefining the way we look at productivity. Because for a long time, I think so many of us have equaled like hard work equals success. I know I did. Something I've come to realize, like this ingrained belief that's been there for so long that working hard, being productive equals achieving more and doing more and getting more accomplished. And so in an effort for me to rewire that belief, and I'm chances are you probably have a very similar belief, is that I have to put myself in a place of redefining the way productivity looks. When I looked at the cycle and I've learned about your cycle and how your body operates in this more rhythm, that reflect phase, the slowing down phases come right before your accelerate phases. They come right before your highest productivity phases. And if I'm not utilizing those, if I'm not slowing down, if I'm not creating space in my life, then I'm not going to perform at my peak. So if you're in this place of just constantly going and constantly hustling and looking at rest and space and taking time off and slowing down is like the antithesis of productivity, what happens is you're actually limiting your productivity. So let's maybe redefine those things, the rest, the slowing down, the creating space, the meditation, all of those types of things. We want to start seeing those as really productive things. They might not be checking off your to-do list, but they're going to enable you to check off your to-do list. They're going to enable you to show up better in those places. Productivity has gotten this, like, I don't know, like there's just so much emphasis in our world and how we can do more, achieve more, go faster, go harder, go longer. And as a high achiever and a highly productive person and a driven woman, that's probably where you've been ingrained to focus. How do we go harder? How do we go longer? How do we push farther? And I'm telling you, the key to that is actually in the pullback. It's in the slowdown. And instead of looking at those things as like they're actually pulling you away from your goals, what if you actually started seeing them as the key ingredient to your goals? the key thing that's going to help you get to your goals faster. So when you look at focus and you look at how can I like focus in on my things and get these things done, sometimes that means walking away from it. It means taking a break. It means not thinking about it. It means putting a little lip on it and like sealing it and saying, I am going to go do something fun. I'm going to hang out with my family. I'm going to go get in the pool. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to go on a hike. We're going to do any of those other things knowing that those other things are actually going to make you focus better. They're going to make you come up with that idea, the creative thing, right? That TEDx talk I was listening to earlier was talking about create. There was a lot of it. It was about creativity. And that's what I was listening to. It was like this element of like creativity. And it was talking about how your brain can't really come up with new ideas and it can't come up with the things it's looking for when it's just constantly inundated with all this information and all of these things. And then in fact, eliminating your phone, eliminating your space, like getting your brain in a place of boredom actually allows you to create your biggest ideas. It allows you to come up with new ideas. And that is why for me as a parent, I am huge on not overscheduling my kids. There's a lot of things you can do. You can get them in soccer and science class and after school coding and Spanish and music. And I mean, like there's a million things you could do for your kids, right? But for me, I've made a very intentional effort to keep their life as slow as possible. It's still not slow, but they each only have one sport. They're only in one activity because I know that the importance of slow and boredom, when they are bored is when they create, when they're bored is when they, their imagination comes out. It's the same for you as an adult too. When you're bored, you have nothing that you're doing. You're not distracted by your phone. When you're sitting maybe in that waiting room, waiting for your doctor's appointment and you don't pull out your phone is when your mind starts to wander. It's when your mind starts to come up with these biggest ideas, right? And that's where yesterday I was like, I'm going to create a podcast episode all about ways to boost your creativity. This one was all about focus and productivity. 
but they kind of go hand in hand. Some of these things are going to have multi-purposes, right? A lot of what we do has ripple effects on other areas of our lives. Slowing down your distractions and is going to be a huge one. So when we look at that reflect and that recharge phase, those are really powerful for you. They're really powerful, productive zones for you. And most people kind of underappreciate them, but you get to change that. You get to do it differently. You get to see them as the powerhouses that they are and embrace them and lean into them, knowing that when you create those spaces and you create that time away and you do those fun things and those pleasurable things, those things that light you up, it's actually giving you the fuel to focus better. Okay. (sighs) Take a deep breath, go for a walk. Maybe you listen to this while you're going for a walk, but if you didn't like go get outside, let the sun shine on your face. If you have sunshine, wherever you're at the wind, whatever it might be, the rain, let yourself be present in this moment embrace the nature. Maybe even this week, like take on the challenge of leaving your phone behind for an entire day, an entire day. I think that we would probably both agree that you'd find lots of pockets of time in your day that were getting wasted and spent on social media or grabbing your phone, looking at your text message, looking at your calendar, like all of those types of things. If you want a supercharged way to increase your productivity, turn off your phone for a day and see what happens. Yes, I know you have life like kids, like that's where maybe go back in there and turn on that like focus setting or whatever it is so that it's like it blocks everything but maybe your spouse and your kids or something like that. So you're like safety purposes, but literally turn it off and see what power comes out when you get outside, go on a hike, go for a walk, move your body. I'd love it. Okay. So share it with me. If you take on that challenge of leaving your phone behind for an entire day and let me know like what creativity comes out, what focus comes out. I would love to know as well, if there's other focus habits that you have, things that you use triggers that help to get you into that focus, like productive state or any of those types of things. I would love to hear what you're using. Love to hear what you're taking away from this episode and actually implementing. And then I will see you in the next episode.